Today's Sunday School lesson is entitled Faith and Wisdom, or The Pursuit of Wisdom. It's taken from James, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11, and it reads as follows. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall in divers temptation. Know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. But if you like wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth all to all men liberally, and honoureth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of God. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brothers of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But let the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass, and the flower thereof faileth, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. The lesson, uh, say, a unifying principle that I want to bring forth is that a lot of times people do have a desire to be seen as wise, but they do not know the true source of wisdom. True wisdom comes from God that he graciously gives to us, but we must ask of him. This, excuse me, reminds me of King Solomon when God asked him what did he want. He didn't say, I want wealth or riches. He said, he asked, he wanted one thing, and that was wisdom. And today we're going to try and consider the relationship between wisdom and perseverance through our trials. And we're going to affirm that trials and hardship is designed to make us wiser and a more productive disciple of Christ. And we pray for godly wisdom, which is to endure life's trials and temptations. What I want to first look at and ask the question, what is a tested faith? When he said, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Know this, that the trying of your faith work is patient, but let temptation have a perfect way. John James, excuse me, is issuing a warning to his listeners that when they we fall into the different kinds of temptation, we are to count it all joy because of this the person becomes stronger in his or her faith and becomes more patient. Through the works of patience we become perfect in our trust in God, and that's what it's designed for us to do to trust than God. The temptations uh, James is talking about is not more or less a fleshly attraction, but it has to do with the persecution that believers is going to encounter. As many as encountering persecution still are the persecuted churches in foreign lands, and they still are being persecuted and being martyred for the name of Jesus, but they are still standing on the wall trials and affliction that we're going to encounter. There are many trials in our life that we encounter and they have come for a purpose to make us stronger in our faith and develop a deeper trust in God. God doesn't tempt us, we must be reminded of this, but he does test us 
in order for us to grow spiritually, he does test us. And with the passing of each test, we become more mature in our Christian walk. Uh, the temptation leads to sin. Let's just note that. Whereas testing leads to growth and maturity. Um, I want to look at, uh, to remind you of what it says, uh, Matthew 5 and 10, which states, Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Yes, as I said earlier, Many of us are tested, are persecuted for our righteousness in Christ. But we continue, we endure because Jesus Christ told us in his word, do not be afraid because he has already overcome the world. Then, why are we tested that can lead to joy when we take a physical test we are happy when we pass the test because we are promoted to another level on a spiritual plane when we are um, tested and promoted and we pass the test we get greater we can become more mature we have a greater faith we become more patient and we have the strength to endure and we have the discernment or the knowledge to ask God for his wisdom because it's his wisdom that will see us through. How so? Let's look at it. We gain patience because when you're doing the test, regardless of the difficulty, we can't go over the test, the trial. We can't go around it. We just have to go through the test. Therefore, we have to wait. We can't shortcut it in any form of formality. We have to go through it every step of the way. But we should be encouraged that God is our deliverer. And that's the, the test that we are designed to pass. And with God on our side, we will pass the test. I want us to take note of this. And this reminds me of the poem, Footprints in the Sand. At the beginning of the journey, there were two sets of footprints. But midways, or somewhere along the road, in the midst of it, there became only one set of footprints. Why is that? Because God picked up the tester and carried him to the, the end of the journey out through the test. And for that, he becomes strong above our faith. And in and more trusting in and believing in God. When our faith is tried, there's a positive and productive yield. What is the yield? We become stronger in our faith and the patient enough to endure whatever we are facing. Let me give you an, an, ex, an example or two of how my faith was tested, thoroughly tested. And I, my youngest son had a serious accident. And the doctor had told me that he was always be a burden. I didn't take the doctor's answer. I kept on enduring in faith. But I went to Dr. Jesus in prayer and asked him this, Lord, you heal my son. So whenever I die, he will not be a burden on nobody. He'd be able to take care of himself. Not that his brothers wouldn't take care I want him to be able to take care of himself. Not that I was in a hurry to leave this world, but I didn't know when. And let me tell you something. God answered that prayer. It took 15 years. My faith was tested. My endurance was tested. And so was my patience. The one thing I had that I knew that God could, and if it will, he would. But he, along the journey, he kept giving me signs of he was answering my prayer because he was getting better and better and better. And today I can tell you he's self-sustaining. He's also he's sufficient. Not that I'm in a hurry to go home either. But I just thank God for bringing us through that test. And I can look at when I was having my heart attacks. 
And I went to God again in prayer and asked him to deliver. He did. I didn't have to have the surgery. So we can glory in our suffering because of we have a testimony. If we are not tested, we don't have a testimony. So, yes, I had perseverance from the various tests that I have had to go through. I am stronger in my faith and my walk and my Christian journey because of the many tests that I've had to face or the trials that I've had to endure. So, and also, we glory because in perseverance, it produces character and character produces hope. And the hope never put us to shame because hope in God is different from the hope in mankind. Man's hope is temporal, whereas God's hope is permanent and everlasting. And then to the other point on character and having godly character, because the Holy Spirit lives in us and we must, we are, if we are in the family of God, then we should represent I'll have some character traits or look somewhat like our Heavenly Father. And I said this, I, my son should look like me. It's just like your family members should look like you have some resemblance of you. Okay? And and during our suffering, we should not mind because of what Christ suffered for us, providing us salvation. So I learned and we should learn to ask not why me, but why not me? Because we must have a deeper faith, a stronger faith, and a deeper trust in God, knowing he is a deliverer, and knowing that he is no respected person, knowing that just if he delivered me or you, he would deliver another, anybody else. God loves us all the same. See, he has no picks and chooses. His son Jesus died on the cross for all humanity. That includes you and I. But we have to accept him as Lord and Savior in order to have salvation. Now, the key to a victorious life is trusting God and applying the principles of his righteousness and faithfulness in him. Yes, we can have a victorious life, but we have to trust God. We have to have faith in him and be submitting ourselves to walk with him daily, not when on our time, but every day. We develop, we develop an enduring, persevering attitude, and we can go to God in prayer and never wavering in our faith of his answer. Let me talk to you a minute for about being double-minded. The precepts of having a double mind is wavering in what we ask God for self or having some doubt. See, when we go to God in prayer, we cannot have doubt. We have to uh, ask him in faith in our prayer and trust in God because we know who he is. He does not wear hearing aid. So we cannot doubt because when we doubt, we cancel our faith and it cuts short our blessings in the process. We must wait on God and have faith in him because there is no failure in him. A firm faith is a confident request that tends to produce a positive answer to God. And if you heard this faith, or this saying rather, prayer is the key to the kingdom, but faith unlocks the door. So what is that saying? That faith in our prayers unleashes God's power to act on our behalf. If we make a request of God, it must be done with the right motive and in the right spirit, and if you want him to, we want an answer for God. What does that mean? 
we must have the right motive, you know, and we must also align our will with the will of God and ask him, let his will be done. This brings to mind when Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying as he was getting ready to go to the cross. And his humanness, he asked, he didn't want to go, but he knew he had. He said, if thine will, if it's thy will, let this cup, bit of cup, pass from me. But if not, thy will be done. And God, the Father's will was that God, the Son, Jesus Christ, was going to die on the cross. He's going to suffer those many hours on the cross, atoning man's sin. And therefore, we should align our wills with, with him. We should not be asking what we ask for. Make sure, as I said, and I'm trying to make a point, we uh, align our wills with his will. So that, because we know that his will is going to be done. He is all God. He's God, sovereign God, who knows all, sees all, and does all, and wants, wants the best for us. Therefore, He's going to what we desire may not align with his will. So we must be mindful enough to align our wills with his will. Know this. The faith is the incubator for abundant living and the tool to break the strongholds of Satan. Let's do this. We must have faith in God. That unwavering, steadfast, enduring faith in God, knowing that He is and He deliver us. He we will deliver us. He is our deliverer, and He will see us through any trials and tribulations that we encounter on this earth, because we are living in a fallen world. So, faith is the engine that drives our relationship with God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that is a true fact. It's biblical and it's a true fact. You cannot please God without faith. First of all, you cannot sin. So you can. You have to see, you can't, let me correct that and clarify that. You can't see him with your naked eye, the physical eye. You have to see him with your spiritual eye. Then we have to believe the impossible. Because with God, all things are possible. But with man, there are some things that man that cannot do. So, yes. Our strong faith in God makes everything possible for us through Him. Faith is the key that unlocks the door of what we're asking God for. And let me close by saying this. Our faith will be tested from time to time. And it is. It's growing and making our faith stronger. And by each with each test that we overcome, it becomes stronger and we become more in tune with God. Yes, and therefore we can have we can count it all joy when we fall into different temptation or when we are afflicted for or persecuted for being followers of Christ. And let me look, explain it another way. When we may God, the head of our lives, and let him sit on the thrones of our lives. All of these adversities 
that surround us will have little to no effect on us because he is the head. He give us his peace. The, the world can't give us God's peace. The world's peace is temporal, whereas God's peace is everlasting. So, yes, this must we have that strong, enduring, and unwavering faith in God. We can count it on joy. We can count on joy because it is going to produce positive fruits. Think about the fruits of the Spirit. That's love, that's joy, that's peace, that's kindness, that's meekness. Whereas, the on the other hand, that's hate, that's bigotry, envy, strife, those things are not of God. The Holy Spirit produces all those. So, as I can say, as I close, let's count it all joy when we encounter temptation in many forms because they have a positive effect. They are designed to bring about positivity, make us a better person, give us more Christ-like character. Let's count it all joy. Instead of saying, why me? Say, why not me? He all wants to be wise. He wants to be a better person. Let us pray. Dear thank Heavenly Father, I thank you for this lesson. I thank you for the message. And let the message be heard for all those and be a positive impact, a positive influence. And let the, the, all the hearers develop that enduring, steadfast, and unwavering faith in you, Lord, because you are a prayer-hearing and answering God. These are another blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.